Hey, this is Joe. Good day. Welcome to part three of my little three chambered two and a half inch square format pinhole camera project. Uh, we're going to pick up where I left off in the middle of building the camera. Well, hey everybody. It's about a week later. I don't know, five days later, and Sunday morning, and I've commenced working on the camera once more. So if you remember, we left off with the front half of the camera, pretty much the body of it, the internal dividers all done. What I need to start making now is the film holder that inserts into the back of the camera. So I had some dimensions that I was working off of on my original project idea, these drawings. But in the course of actually constructing this, I went back this morning and re-measured precisely the um, interior dimensions of where the film needs to sit in the little recess with the lip here. And I've discovered I'm about a sixteenth of an inch shy of my original dimensions, a sixteenth inch smaller. And so I've revised my dimensions somewhat and uh, now with getting a lot more accurate in size, I'm beginning to make the film holder. So the film holder is going to be a sandwich of three layers. It's going to have a back piece and it's going to have a front piece that's the same size as the back piece but it's going to have three windows cut in it, the two and a half inch square windows. And then between the back and the front piece will be a thin U-shaped spacer that's going to be an eighth of an inch wide along the two sides and the bottom. And that will create a little slot in the top that we can slip our photo paper into. So I have the two pieces precisely cut, trimmed, and they do fit quite nicely in the camera. So I'm going to now start cutting, making the measurement lines and cutting the window mats for the front half. And if I've done everything right with my knife here, this should be almost as precise as die cutting. Ah. Boy, these little divider pieces are going to look like they're going to be pretty fragile. I'm going to have to worry about how strong these are. Uh, hopefully they'll get stronger when I laminate them with glue. I have um, the three sides to the little spacer. There's a side, there's a side, and of course the bottom edge. And then the top edge is open. So when you put the back on it, it's going to be sealed three ways and open right there on the top edge for the paper to slip into. And I'm going to have to glue it on uh, these three sides, right along the edge of it. All right, so on the uh, back of the film holder, I've marked uh, in pencil the three edges that I need to uh, apply glue to. So I'm going to put the glue on the back and then press the frame against it. And this is 3 30 seconds inch wide. Again, I lost uh, about a 30 second of an inch or so in my dimensions of my film holder just because of the way the thing came out, the camera came out just a little tight. But, but put some glue down and then get it set. Okay, well the glue is still drying. Here is my little test strip of paper slipped down inside the holder. And it goes all the way down like that. And I have my two and a half inch square windows. And this will fit inside the camera, hopefully, nice and snug. And then pretty much uh, all I have to do after this is build the back of the camera that fits over the whole top like that, all around it. Okay, let's talk for a minute about sealing up the camera, darkening up the camera. So every uh, point in the camera's system that the light is going to bounce off of an edge or a corner, we need to blacken it to dampen and absorb the light. And what I've done here is I've taken a permanent marker and I've darkened uh, all of the, for instance, the top edge, the inside lip, 
our little eighth inch thick ledge that's more like 3 30 seconds not really eighth of an inch and uh, I've darkened partly into the side walls of all the camera chambers and the question might come up is to do you need to darken the entire inside of the camera and it, a lot of that depends on how fast your film is and what's the spectral sensitivity of the film or paper versus the color of the camera inside. If I was using ISO 400 sheet film or faster I would definitely be blackening the entire inside of the camera. I would probably flock it with adhesive black craft felt all along the inside. Um, for this photo paper, a Harman direct positive paper specifically, it's really pretty slow and it's pretty much only blue, UV sensitive, slightly green sensitive. Um, this is kind of light tan cardboard, so it's this kind of color exposes rather dark. It has some red into it, some browns into, in it. Um, so I'm only darkening along maybe about a quarter inch along the edge here where the light from the pinhole might be striking at an angle. And I don't want to have light reflect off these sidewalls onto the edge of the image and lighten it or fog it. Um, if I end up having that problem, however, I still have time afterwards to flock or darken the inside surfaces, but I don't really think I'll need to. Now in regard to the uh, film holder, I'm going to be darkening the same way all the little edges around the window openings. And the back of the camera that I haven't made yet, it's going to be basically be darkened along this, black, this back edge of the back where it mates up here where the light would come in that gap and try to bounce around I'm going to darken that back edge. Okay so I'm starting to make the the back lid to the camera and I have this base plate that is the right size according to what I've measured and I have this fixture this pretty straight cut piece of oak and I have it taped down to my surface here and so this edge of the back lid is firmly up against this as a kind of a vertical surface and then one side the long side of my lid is going to attach down onto it like that and I need to glue it so I'm going to have to put a thin bead of glue along the uh, edge of this strip and then I'm going to have to sit it down like that and ma to make sure that this angle stays at 90 degrees I have another piece of wood that's also been taped with this masking tape and uh, I'm just going to push it up against there and let the glue dry and then of course after that I'm going to tape the corner on the outside with gaffer's tape but I really need this bottom edge of the strips to be glued to the back of the camera. The fillet of glue is drying. I've used a, uh, a wetted q-tip to wipe off the excess glue and also to wipe it off from the masking tape here both on this piece here and on the backing plate behind it so that uh, it hopefully won't stick, the cardboard won't stick to the tape, but it will be at a 90 degree angle and the vertical is glued to the horizontal. I have the second long side drying here. The first one is hardened up enough that you can see it's nice and stiff. And then I have the short pieces that will go on the, on the ends here. And then all the corners are going to get reinforced with uh, gaffer's tape on the outside. And here is the uh, lid glued up. It's still curing right now. And I'm going to, um, when it finishes curing, I'm going to take magic marker and I'm going to darken all the corners and on the inside and then I'm going to put a layer or a strip of black gaffer's tape all around the outside to seal it up and give it a little bit more integrity. While we're at it, let's just show you. Oh yeah, I have a little surprise to show you also here. Um, so I've made my little cardboard shutter pieces 
just like that. They're a 32nd of an inch shy of three quarters of an inch wide, so they have enough looseness to um, pull up and down pretty easy. They stick up above the body of the camera about three quarters of an inch, so I have a nice handle. I might put some gaffer's tape on the handle part to make it a little more secure, but just to show you here, um, it goes together nice and tight. And it looks like there's very little of a gap in there. And because I use those wooden pieces to get these angles at 90 degrees, it fits nice and snug with a very little of a gap in there. So I'm hoping it'll be nice and light tight. And now I've decided another thing that we need to talk, discuss here the piece of cardboard that I was going to use for the pinhole itself, right in the front slot. Well, the piece of cardboard is the same thickness as the front slot. And if you put a thin piece of brass on top of it and tape it, now it's too thick. So I needed a material that's thinner than the cardboard. So I've decided to use a thin piece of sheet brass. And I've already gone ahead, cut it to size. I've chamfered the corners. I have a three sixteenths hole drilled in it and now I'm going to make my pinhole in a thin piece, a paper thin piece of two mil brass that I'm going to tape to this and that will hopefully be thin enough to go into the slot very easily like that. I'm going to fold down uh, the front, the top half inch of this brass folded down in the front so it'll stick down below the shutter so you'll be able to pull either the cardboard shutter or the pinhole, take it out easily. Okay, so before I can start making a pinhole, I kind of have to know what size pinhole that I'm going to target. So let's look at the geometry of the camera. From the pinhole to the center of the film plane is 25 millimeter focal length. But from the pinhole to the side or top, middle of the top or middle of the side is 45 milliliter, millimeters. You can use a pinhole calculator on the web. I like to use uh, Eric Renner's book on pinhole photography. The sizes that he has listed in the table back there in the back of the book is a little bit larger than optimal, but the accuracy at which you can make a pinhole by hand is only going to be approximate. But according to his book, if we target the center of the, optimizing the pinhole for the center of the image, we need a 0.2 millimeter pinhole, or to the edge is a quarter of a millimeter, either a fifth or a quarter of a millimeter, somewhere in that general ballpark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try making this by hand and just getting it somewhere between 0.2 and 0.25. Now my general methodology for making these pinholes is I'm using this 0.2 millimeter brass, sheet brass, that is paper thin. And I'm gonna make a very small dimple using a sewing needle. I have a sewing needle in a wine bottle cork just as a handle, but I'm gonna make a very small dimple not a, hole, a complete hole, just a dimple. And then I'm gonna sand the dimple down using 600 grit emery. I mean, I'm gonna use a figure eight pattern. And what I wanna do is I wanna shave off the tip of that dimple so that it makes a very, very fine hole. And then I'm going to try and uh, clean out the hole and get it as close as I can to the uh, size that I need. The challenge in doing all this is it's easy to overshoot and make the hole too big. So I want to, and getting a, a fifth of a millimeter is pretty difficult. It takes usually a few tries, but it's kind of fun. So we'll see what happens here. Okay, and so you might be able to see reflected in here is a little dimple I've made. This is, you're looking at the dimple side. And now I'm going to try sanding it down with a figure eight pattern and try to shave off just the tip of it to get a tiny little hole in there. Okay, I've moved into the office because the kitchen is full of kids' voices and everybody talking and the TV's on, so we're back in my office now. Okay, so um, to recap, I used the needle in the cork trick and I worked on the dimple and I sanded it with a figure eight pattern on the emery cloth, emery paper, and I kind of repeated back and forth until I had a barely tiny hole 
in the tip of the dimple and I measured it and it was really pretty close to a fifth of a millimeter, 0.2 millimeters already. So then I just ended up cleaning it up uh, first from the reverse side of the dimple, just very carefully touching the tip of the needle into the to the uh, dimple and just rotating it gently, not pushing much, and then doing it from the other side back and forth and then inspecting it under a high magnification loop to make sure it's clean. Now you might be curious as to how you measure uh, the size of a pinhole and let me uh, describe that for you. So I have a millimeter scale here and what I'm doing with the millimeter scale is I'm going to hold the pinhole up behind the scale. I'm going to hold the piece of brass up behind the scale so the pinhole is halfway peeking out above the markings, the millimeter markings on the scale. And then I'm going to use a loop and using the loop I'm going to measure how many diameters fit within one millimeter. When you're looking at the edge of the millimeter scale the millimeter marks are going to be, appear very wide like this. So I start with half of the pinhole peeking out from behind the scale. I start with the left edge of the pinhole against the left edge of the left mark and then I move the piece of brass over to where the right edge of the pinhole was and I keep moving it over and counting how many diameters until it gets to the left edge of the next mark. And if it's not a whole number increment uh, of millimeters of diameters then you simply go uh, one divided by however many diameters, like for instance one divided by 4.5 or however many it was, and that gives you the actual diameter in millimeters of the pinhole. This pinhole that I made is pretty clean, very round. I held it up to the light, backlit it, used my loop to examine it from both sides. I don't see any burrs. It appears pretty round and uh, it looks like I'm at 0.2 millimeters. This is a fifth of a millimeter. So this is optimized for the center of the film plane. Now if I decide after testing the camera that it's a little too small, if I want to go a little bit bigger, I can always take my needle and clean out the hole a little bit more and make it a little bit bigger. But we're going to call this 0.2 millimeters. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this piece of brass down a little bit smaller and then using some gaffer's tape I'm going to mount it to my brass piece. Okay, so I have the uh, piece of brass. So this is the front side of the pinhole slip and I've bent the uh, end of it up about a half an inch or so. And uh, the way this works now is of course you're going to put the pinhole piece into the camera like that and you'll still be able to grab the uh, shutter behind it and uh, reinsert it and this has a little handle that you can use to move the pinhole from one chamber to another. Now there's an interesting question as to what are we going to designate the working focal ratio of the camera at? Keeping in mind that the distance from the pinhole to the center of the paper is 28 millimeters and from the pinhole to the edge of the sides of the paper is 45 millimeters. And if you divide those two numbers by 0.2, you'll end up with either F140 for the center of the pinhole, the center of the paper, or F225 for the edge. So it depends upon your aesthetics and how you compose, etc. But think about it this way, if you put the principal subject matter near the center zone, the center area of the square image, and meter for that focal ratio, then the edges of the image are going to be vignetted. They'll darken because of the increased focal ratio, the fall off of light. So if you try exposing so the edge of the image is normally exposed, the center of the image will be blown out. And the direct positive paper or paper negatives have a fairly narrow uh, dynamic range and so I think it's best that we expose for the center of the image and let the image fall off 
in the edge. And that I kind of like aesthetically. I like that vignetted look to pinhole imagery. So I'm going to call this probably F-150, just a little bit higher than F-140. We'll call it F-150 pinhole. I'm going to take this camera out maybe tomorrow and give it a first test at that working focal ratio and see what the images look like. Well, this has been another, yet another round in this series of making this little cardboard three chambered single pinhole camera. And uh, we're getting close to finishing it up. I do have to put a little bit of dark magic marker, permanent marker, Sharpie marker, I should say, on the inside of the box, uh, the back lid here. And uh, But until next time, this is Joe Van Cleve, and hopefully we'll have some images next time. You guys have yourselves a great day.